if going on an epic adventure and managing your own crew of mercenaries in a medieval world filled with danger sounds great, well, War Tales is an absolute must play in 2023. I recently uploaded my plus 350 hours review on extreme difficulty and today I want to continue the adventure and share with you guys how to not just survive but thrive on the new highest difficulty in the game. How you can pick up all the tools for the job to make the first days of survival easy mode. Which starter crew I think is going to be awesome for a full playthrough. All the knowledge points you should prioritize to struggle less, make everything more efficient, the perfect crew size, profession balance, how to pay off the wages of your companions a little bit easier, feed your mouths and so much more. In this video you'll have it all, so without further ado, let's get right to it. I quickly want to say that this is a slightly more advanced guide for players who want to brave the highest difficulty in the game. If you're still fresh to War Tales, I definitely recommend you to first check out my ultimate returning and beginner player guide, which you can find at the top right of the screen. If you're up for a serious challenge though, welcome. Any questions about the game, you're very welcome to leave them in the comments. I'm always happy to help. Or maybe you have suggestions for future guides. Well, right now we're going to start a new game. And we're going to choose our destiny. I cover all this in detail in my ultimate guide. While well, let's quickly go over the different compositions or options for a crew. Bandits looking to escape the guard. Don't pick this one as it already comes with two rangers. One of them can be picked up very early game in our starting area. So don't focus on that. The farmers with less happiness are something you want to avoid at all times as well. Deserters fleeing an abusive captain is a pretty decent setup. Swordsman, archer, warrior, ranger. Since we're playing on extreme difficulty, wearing shields is going to be essential for survival. So you could give that to both the warrior and the swordsman. We also have the men escorting merchants who lost their employer. Pretty decent comp. While I don't recommend you to go with the spearmen early game, they have pretty lacking damage. While my absolute favorite would be the apprentice friends looking for an adventure. As this one has the perfect combo of survivability, dealing damage from afar and also taking out weaker targets from behind. The minus five raw materials is no biggie as we can pick up plenty of these in our first day of playing. While the plus 30 influence can be used to potentially already pick up an amazing companion and solve some interactions. The second card should really be something that is in line with your play style. If you like a more aggressive type of play, then you should pick up Excellent at Slab Games to have an increased critical damage. While if you want to play safe, have a little bit more HP, carry more weight, let's say, I think the constitution right here is going to be awesome. Cunning fighters for more experience or quick learners are two which you really shouldn't focus on. While if you want to have longer walks in general, be able to cover greater distances, the long walks perk is awesome to have. The safest bet is without doubt the 10% constitution. Crit can be achieved pretty easily with different traits, but let's move on to the next one. The debuff is a pretty tough cookie, ladies and gentlemen, because right now on extreme difficulty, if one of your characters gets downed during combat with lower than 15 willpower, it will instantly die. So a serious lack of self-confidence is not really recommended. While there are ways to increase your willpower right now, a very hard time getting up is also a little bit dangerous because you will have a chance of getting attacked during arrest. Lowering your crit chance doesn't sound like a good idea either. Same counts for the eternal dissatisfaction. I personally think the safest bet would be the somewhat meek appearance as you can basically increase your carry capacity by recruiting more horses. More horses in your crew doesn't mean there are going to be more enemies during combat. So this is an easy way to counter that. Next up, the adaptive or region locked exploration. This is really up to you. I personally like to free roam and have a more dynamic experience, let's say, when exploring the game. Region locked is a little bit limiting. You want to keep the starter region as is, Tiltron County, because it's in the center of the map, gives you quick access to pretty much all the other biomes. We're going to put combat and automatically the survival difficulty on extreme. So now we're ready to walk straight into hell. That is immediate. 
idiots. Retreats come at a greater penalty. Companions hopefully are lost. Enemy groups are faster. Disengagement is brutal. Overall difficulty is at its maximum as well. If you have steel balls, you could go for the Iron Man difficulty, which is something I don't really recommend, as one stupid mistake, even misclicking, can ruin your entire progress. Instead, just go for something more limited or, I don't know, do free. For a more experimental playthrough, I think this one is nice if you want to, at a certain point, split your save into two different playstyles. And this is what your starter crew would look like for extreme difficulty. A safe one with a ton of damage. The first one is Vanessa, a bloodthirsty ranger with 3% increased critical hit chance, nimble to increase that dexterity stat. So you want to take these two positive traits and that means you have to go for a negative as well. Lazy is by far the safest one as profession experience is something you don't have to worry about. You can level up pretty fast while glutton will make food management a true pain, especially if you stack this on multiple characters. Same counts for pickpocket. Then you're gonna have to pay a lot of gold during every rest. Stupid is also a pretty safe bet while leveling becomes a little bit more complicated later game so just go with lazy. Scrawny reduces the constitution, don't go with that. Don't reduce the carry capacity because we already did that with the negative trait. Depressed, nope. Drunkard, big nope. For utility, you want to take Wrath so she can finish off enemies a little bit easier, with which we can also generate Valor points, which we're going to talk about in a second. Then we have Ragnar, our Swordsman, with Taunt. This basically applies weakening, reduces the damage of enemies, awesome to force engage, also gain Valor points. We also have the Brawny and Strong, Increase constitution for more carry weight and HP, which is amazing for tanks. You can make it a tank by switching your starter weapon, by the way. So always go for the one-handed and shield option. Strong increases your base damage with those abilities and also take the lazy. Then our brute Maximus. Also focus on taunt right here to reduce the damage of enemies. Force engage for that Valor buildup and also choose for a one-hander. Utility, I absolutely love to go with first aid early, while right now it's gonna cost twice the points. And since you don't have 15 willpower at the beginning, your characters will instantly die anyways. You can purchase more of these skills later on, so just focus on taunt. This one even costs only one valor, so that's awesome to have. While for traits, you also wanna pick up brawny and strong. Skill up that base damage, get more HP and carry weight. On our archer, Ari, I focus on the aim skill because this one allows you to take out targets from afar with much more accuracy. You also have less movement speed early game, so this is awesome to finish off those squishy targets. And again, first aid is useless as long as you have less than 15 willpower. Just purchase it later. Also focus on bloodthirsty and nimble to scale up your damage, increase your crit chance on all the archer and ranger type of characters. Negative trait, lazy once again, and then last but not least, we also have our horse. Don't you worry guys, we're not gonna build Roach into a war horse. We're gonna make it brawny so it can carry more stocky, increase that even more so, and then focus on lucky. We're not gonna go into combat, so it really doesn't matter if the crit is lower, while drunkard, depressed, or all the other things right here aren't nice to have. All right, so now we're ready for extreme difficulty. Let's go. So the first thing you're going to do is just deal with the hood lamps right here. If you're playing on lower difficulty, you're going to have to deal with either one or two. But yeah, this is extreme. So a very quick golden tip. Always click on the enemy who gets to play first. Hover over the move button right here. So right now you can see that it can basically reach these two characters. So if you place them a little bit more tactically, it's only going to be possible for him to reach Ari right now. So what we're going to do is basically make him burn his move. So he won't be able to do anything. This is a pretty squishy target and he also gets to play last. So what I'm going to do is focus on him first. Look at that. We've already burnt a little bit of its armor. Now we're just going to run behind the tank and return. You can see that this hoodlum doesn't get to do anything. So we actually have the chance to maybe take out this guy before he even gets to play. Instead of giving this archer a free game, we also want to engage combat with him as they barely deal any damage with their fists. So now we just end the turn. 
And if you want, you can even engage on one of the enemies do the taunt, so they're going to deal a lot less damage. If they're surrounded, the damage to them will also be increased. But voila, executed, dealt with the first pack with ease. After that combat, the first thing you want to do is check out the plateau stables. As right here, you can already inspect the crate right here and click on steal. This will unlock a new profession, thief. Right now, we can click on our characters and increase their dexterity or maybe even pick up the critical hit. So you should make every single one of them a thief or tinkerer early game because this basically gives you free attributes. I'm not sure if you should steal something already, but as long as it's below the 100 of your wanted meter, I think you're totally fine. Floops. Turn around these environments, by the way, and hold the alt to find treasure a little bit easier. For example, steal that wheat, but you definitely want to pick up hemp at all the locations because this is awesome to craft rope early game. Interact with this little barrel right here because this will already give you some bonus loot. More cloth for torches. And now we just want to follow the road. Important, always walk on the road because this increases your movement speed. And open up your progress. I think the most important one to pick up first is run as it allows you to sprint if you hold the shift button. The next one I think is amazing is career plans because there you can spend influence to add extra aptitude points when leveling up. Start doing this from the early game. It's going to make a huge difference. Right now you want to interact with Strumcap, the first village. Go to the Master Hulans Forge and click on the forge. Right now we unlock the blacksmith profession. You could give this to Maximus right now to increase your strength. Same counts for Ragnar. I mean, you only need one blacksmith, but the start attributes are awesome to have early during combat, even if you don't craft just yet. You also want to talk to Master Hulan. If you don't really care about suspicion and think you can deal with that, you can also steal the 20 raw materials right here. So um, yeah, this is going to make it extreme, guys. Now we have a lot of tools, a little bit of suspicion, which basically depletes over time. Really, you shouldn't worry too much about the guard early game, especially because now we have that sprint skill so we can run away from them pretty easily. Also check out the apothecary because right here you can pick up, of course, the alchemist skill. I don't think you should focus on this profession early while purchasing a couple extra medicines could help early game. I like to save my coin and instead buy some extra food right here. I mean, if you purchase 20 salt, you can basically use all that for cooking. If you find some pork chops or, for example, purchase wheat, you can make the bread. Also purchase some apples, let's say. This is going to make dealing with hunger a lot less painful. Next up, you want to visit the inn. And we're going to first talk with the emissary right here. Pick up a couple quests for our first days. There are some quests you should definitely avoid early game, especially the Matthias Lund fight, a boss fight which is going to be pretty hard. At a certain point, you can even negotiate the rates of missions, the amount of crowns you get after completing them. So we're going to focus on those easier ones. Free Mount Altis Tower is actually an amazing one, which we can do in the southeast. So right here we have help requested amateur hunters. True amateurs, I think they're in the west. There we go. And also vanquish the Emna gang. I think this one is in the east. There we go. After picking up those missions, you also want to talk with each mercenary in the inn because they might come with some amazing starter traits. But you want to focus on those dexterity and strength increments. We already have two tanks, so this guy is definitely not interesting. We primarily want to focus on an archer, so this would be pretty interesting while it doesn't come with amazing traits. Again, you want to focus on dexterity and critical hit chance. Especially the solitary with plus 10% bonus damage when standing alone is an awesome one to have. Don't worry if you don't find something nice, you don't want to rush this. Only upgrade your crew size when you're ready for it. Alright, so we've basically done everything we can right here. Be careful for those guards if you decided to steal the tools, but um, if we escape, we always exit where we entered the village. But now we basically want to use our shift at all times to move around on the map and walk in big circles around those patrols. Interact with a fishing pool right here. Make Ari an angler. This is a profession you want to have permanently at all times exclusively on your archer. 
I'm gonna temporarily make one of my tanks a tinkerer because we're gonna pick up another character very soon, which will be our permanent one. Make a lock pick. This will give us some extra knowledge. I'm also gonna craft two fish hooks right here. And with the hemp we picked up earlier at the stables, we can also craft some rope. With the two knowledge points we get from crafting, we want to pick up career plans, as this one allows you to get that extra aptitude when leveling up with your influence. There we go. Trust me, guys, this is going to make things so much easier. You also want to use one of those hooks to deplete this fishing pond, get three fish in return. And now we want to follow the road to the east. Okay, so now I got tired. This is interesting because we have the guard right there. So what we want to do is get off the road, guys. Get off the road. Make sure you're always checking your surroundings because these guys, they can be pretty scary. This is also why you want to save every now and then. The free save will make extreme a little bit less extreme. Be sure to wait a little bit until the guard is a little bit further away because if you rest when they are too close, danger levels are going to be high. Now it's average. And yeah, if you are scared for the 10% to trigger, just quick save, which you can see at the top right of the screen. See, if I just press my F1 right here, I can always save. Now I can just throw all the snacks on the fire and rest. So with everyone around the campfire and one tinkerer, we basically made two tools. We also gained two Valor points. We have plus three happiness. Very important. You want to make sure to first get that happiness to 15. Because above 15, you will basically generate influence per extra happiness point. Influence can be recruited for new characters, but especially for the late game, you want to have this for your banners. Valor points make combat a lot easier. And of course, your food management. Be sure to have enough food with you at all times. Right now, we're going to have to make sure we can pay the wages of our companions. So we're going to start doing those first contracts. If you are lucky, you can pick up a contract for this little crew right here. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. But yeah, now you want to head towards the jail because right here we can pick up some more interesting stuff. First, I'm going to cast the line and catch some more fishies for free snacks. Now we're going to check out the jail. Talk with this lady. The lady mayonnaise. Very nice. I'm going to open up this window right here, by the way, so you can always see and select your target. So quickly select Vanessa. Give her the dagger right here because we're going to sell this one. And already pick up three chains. One, two, three. Because we can use these to capture enemy outlaws and bandits. If we return them to this lady, we will get some nice rewards in return. If you want, you can also purchase some ropes to capture animals to fight on your side. Well, they consume a lot of food and also make enemy gangs or crews combat a little bit more difficult early game. Something I definitely don't recommend you to do. We have some... Copper in the woods right here, which we're going to quickly pick up so we can craft a couple more fish hooks and a lock pick. Well, I also want to craft a piton right here to get another knowledge point. Spam clicking, by the way, is awesome to do for fishing, makes it a lot easier. Our fatigue bar is pretty low right now, and I don't really want to risk it to walk too far into the woods because we could trigger some animals. So what I'm going to do is do the resting. Always check your danger level. Now we also already have four perches, three pikes, two carps, plenty of apples and some bread. So dealing with the hunger early game is not going to be a problem. Voila, we are already on day three. We have plenty of tools for combat, plenty of food. And the nice thing is we even made some extra knowledge. We could use that for rationing, which I think is an amazing bonus to have. Then you will consume three food less. Awesome to pick up as quick as possible. You could even pick up the cannibalism right here so you can devour human corpses. That will make food management even easier. Same counts for fragility to reduce the wages paid to your companion. In the advanced knowledge tab, you can also pick up restoration earlier. I think this is an amazing one to have as at a certain point, you will have armor with some more points. These by default will basically repair 10 damage. But if you have 15 early, this makes these tools so much more efficient. 
Right now, though, I'm going to take Smooth Talk because with Smooth Talk, we will basically unlock the fast training. If you welcome new recruits, they get a bonus aptitude point, which is awesome to have before you focus on the restoration. I'm going to quickly pick up these right here as well. Make sure that you always have enough green so you don't go in the red. I'm going to quickly switch my tanks to the front right here and also interact with the abandoned tower. Because right here we can talk with this dude, Klaas. We can basically free him and get some bonus tools if we bring him back to Strump Cap. So Vanessa is going to pick the lock right here. Again, quick saving is optional if you're scared of breaking your first lock. Just fiddle around a little bit. The reward is 20 raw materials, 15 influence, and some bonus points for our progression. Unfortunately, we don't have any ropes. Otherwise, it would have been easy to just drop one right here, quickly get to our contract. Well, right now, we just have to walk around a little bit. And look at that. The guard even decided to attack our target. So this makes things even more interesting. Even though we're wanted, we can help them right now. So we even get the help of the government. That's amazing. So yeah, now it is a six versus three. Not so extreme anymore now, is it? But uh, yeah, what you want to do in these situations, abuse them to the maximum. You don't want to soak any damage, put all the green targets as close to the enemy as possible. So they will basically engage with them, not with your targets. So you can save those tools when an enemy is less than half HP. Use the chains or rope to capture them. We have 87 chance. Wow. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Let's try that again because we already have plenty of free turn. So there we go. We captured one of the targets. Oh boy. Unfortunately, there was a crit. But yeah, if you get to bring her low on HP as well, you can also capture that character which means you have two prisoners which you can turn in for a lot of money anyways we got 27 during this battle and also a ringleader's coif i think these are amazing helmets to farm early game because each of these gives plus one willpower at least this helps you to get to that 15 willpower faster which allows you to get down so you can heal your characters now we can also level up ari what you should do in my opinion, is focus on getting that willpower to 15 ASAP so you can get down during combat. But at the same time, you also want to have extra movement speed, like at least 10. Otherwise, your characters are going to feel like snails. Archers, I also recommend you to focus on Valorous support. So you can end turn right next to an ally. They will support them in battle and also gain one Valor point. Okay, so the guard is running away. That's nice. We can hide in the bushes. See, they won't be able to see us only in this little cone, let's say. So now we have to rest. We've got class, which you can put near the campfire for extra happiness. And also Urbras, our prisoner, which we're just going to leave be. We're going to right click. As you can see, we now have to provide 24 pieces of food to the table as we have extra mouths to feed. Sucks balls, really, but uh, you just have to deal with that. Carnivorous? What? I don't have carnivores in my crew. Class doesn't have any traits. This guy... Ah, so indeed it was a bug. Anyways, now we made some more tools. We reached a cap of 15 happiness, so everything else will translate to some bonus influence points. But you don't want to worry too much about those wages. What I'm going to do right now is instead make my walking loop as efficient as possible. Try to complete a contract in the mountains right here. So go a little bit to the south. This is an interesting vendor, by the way, which you want to talk with if you get infected with the plague. These guys can help you out. Well, right now, what we want to do is open up our map. You can see that we have the free Mount Altis Tower right there. This is another 125 crowns reward. So it's definitely going to be worth picking up with all the exploration we do while Reddit. We unlock some new knowledge points as well. Picking up some extra flowers with which we can craft some medicine. Right here you can find a wood pile. We can even put our slaves to work, which I absolutely love about this game. A little bit to the northwest of the camp, you can even find this little outpost, which you can inspect. 
And right there, you will find some bonus crowns and a prayers book. So see, right now we're getting a lot closer to the amount of wages we're going to have to pay to our companions to make them happy. And we've got some wolves behind us. Oh boy, this is dangerous. Very low on our fatigue bar. That's why you want to have the sprint ASAP. We've got some flowers right here. And yeah, we basically made it to the Altis Tower, which we have to do for that extra quest. I am only able to pay 90 crowns right now, but that's fine, guys. You can temporarily go below 10 happiness. Again, it's just more efficient to stay on 15 for that influence. Just make sure to not go below 5. And now we can deal with the contract right here. Voila, Maximus unlocked the trade, tough. So we got two remains, which we can eat later on. I'm gonna loot all this stuff, repair the damages done and use our first medicine. Upgrade Maximus, make sure he becomes a destroyer so he can wear heavy armor. So you can have an ultimate tank in the front line. Destroyer is also awesome to apply weakening to reduce that damage right there. And yeah, because it's a tank, now it's a good time to focus on either willpower or constitution. Open up the locks right here, get all the treasure. Look at that, a free military report, which is free knowledge, a mace, which we can give to Maximus. <laughs> give him even more armor. So uh, yeah, let's quickly get to the camp. We've got three prisoners right here, which we can turn in for a nice amount of gold. Reduce our suspicion level and you should also have a couple pitons ready at all times because these make travel so much easier. So I'm going to craft two of these bad boys. I recommend you to have your inventory open at all times as well because this is going to make usage of the pitons so much easier. If we right click, we can place them to skill terrain. So right now, if we place them here, we can basically use that to climb down. And wow, we're even getting charged by the guard right now. So see how OP these things are. We're just disengaging, running away from them before they are able to get to us. So uh, yeah, very good stuff to get your hands on as quick as possible. Trust me, guys, if you have pitons all over the place, escaping the guards or other crews is going to be no problemo. Quickly pick up all the goodies right here and I'm going to visit the Strump Cap Mill because this is where you can pick up another free companion. So uh, just talk with all the stuff right here. We've got some free wheat. We've got some free hemp. We've got all these corpses. So that's 12 crowns. We've got 10 more crowns. We've got this barrel and behind it, you have another inventory with more free knowledge and talk to hackers. You can finish this guy. If you don't need him, but I like to heal him up because trust me, guys, a bonus ranger is going to be awesome. You want to have one thief and one tinkerer for both lockpicking and crafting camp equipments. Unfortunately, the traits of this dude are hard baked. You can be lucky while today we weren't so lucky. He got raised by boars, which will increase the willpower as long as he's fighting next to piggies. So eventually we want to get rid of this guy, replace him with a character with better traits. But for now, we can put him on the tinkerer job. So get back to your camp. Now Ragnar, our warrior, can become a blacksmith again because strength is so much better for him. Right now, though, you can see that we're very close to ending the next day. We still have to pay some wages. Let's quickly visit the Lund farm right here. And this is why capturing prisoners is amazing. Since we don't have a woodcutter, we can just put one of our slaves to the jobs. Get our hands on some free wood. So yeah, now we can put those nice remains on the fire. Some nice crispy buddies. So we still have 13 happiness, the crowns, the wages are starting to weigh us down, let's say. But we're getting very close to our rewards and we can bring all these guys in for bonus coin. Oh, we've got a guard right next to us. This is scary. Let's see what these are, guys are going to do. I'm going to see if we have some enemies in the distance. Looks like there are a lot of guards on this road, so we won't be able to get there. Instead, what I'm going to do is run to the north. Collect that bounty for the next rest. If we turn in class, we already get rid of all those blue guards on the map. That is something you want to do as quick as possible. 
So if we quickly open up the map, just run from the Lund farm straight towards Strum Cap. We can visit the prison afterwards. So here we are. Go to the forge. Talk with Master Hulan. And there you go. Hand over class. If we can find some leather on the market, and yes we do, we can even craft a couple targes. So I'm gonna sell this, sell the club. I think we only need two. So these give us 11 guards and plus five armor. If your timing is perfect when clicking right after the particle shinings, you will basically get some bonus rolls. Now it has plus 13 and plus seven armor. Much better than the shields which we currently have equipped. Look at that. We can sell those trash barrel lids. I'm gonna quickly visit the apothecary. Talk to this guy. Oh well, not so much a guy. Buy a couple of these flasks. Give one of my slaves the alchemist profession. And craft for medicine. These cost about 40 gold each, so you want to craft these at all times when you're in a village. So always pick up the flowers in your surroundings. Right now, we also want to go to the Traveler's Feast Inn. If you want, you can talk to the informant and get your hands on some intel right here for influence. But I don't recommend you to do that. Just visit the lady for the bounty. Look at that, 264 we have right here. Now we can pick up a couple more missions. First, again, go for the easy ones, which aren't too far away. Every in visit, you should quickly check out the traits of all those mercenaries as well. But again, we found some pretty bad ones. So we're just going to leave them be. You can constantly stock up on food right here as well. I think both salt and meat or veggies are awesome to pick up right here and uh, visit the forge for possibly some extra tools. Now we're getting very close to the Tiltron Jill. You see that my fatigue bar is depleting very quickly, but I'm going to quickly interact with this thing because if we can turn in the prisoners, well, this basically means for the next rest, we're going to have to feed less mouths. Look at that. We no longer have that one star wanted level. We can purchase another chains. Recommend you to have like four of those. Purchase a couple ropes in case you want to craft some extra pitons. And now we have plenty of coin to pay the wages. Everybody is going to be happy and we are back to 15. Voila. So there you have it. An amazing start in War Tales on Extreme Difficulty, which gives you a nice amount of crowns, a massive load of tools so you can do a lot of repairs without having to visit town. Plenty of medicine. The only thing you're always going to struggle with is the wages of your companions and food consumption. So before we wrap up the video, let me give you a couple more amazing tips to make this super manageable. So first off, food management. Be sure to fish every pond. Always cast out that rot. Have enough hooks ready to deplete every school you come across because that's free food swimming for you for which you don't have to sacrifice fatigue with combat. If I open up the map quickly, you can see that we are now a little bit south of Strum Cap. Right here, you will find Old Wilbert's Sheepfold. If you interact with this place, you can talk with this lady. She will basically run towards the northwest, into the woods, to this little fishery. So if we visit the place, you can see these two fellas arguing. We want to interact with the Nye. She will ask us to deal with the old guy, but... Just make her shut up, man. Now, you also get to interact with old Wilbert right here. That's a relief. Accept and you will get a fly. I like fly fishing in real life, so this is a no-brainer quest for me. I always pick up this item, but if you give it to one of your companions, they basically have a chance to catch an additional fish each time they cast their line. So the first fish we catch is just one carp. I mean... You have to get a little bit lucky with this, but uh, the small chance, trust me, over a longer course of time is going to make it very nice. That was another single fish. But there we go. The third catch was two carp. So with the fish from that pond alone, we can already meet requirements right here. If we focus on the knowledge, go for rationing. 
Well, we're only going to have to throw in one of those remains and there we go. Be sure to pick up as many of these resources all the time when you visit new areas, especially the iron ore, because this allows you to craft a cook pot early. These are going to make that food management so much easier. Assign one of your tanks as cook, it will get plus two constitution. So check this out. From 32 HP, it instantly goes to 36. The higher level you're cooking, the more tank your characters will become. And yeah, just assign them to the cook pot. Turn all that salt which you purchased earlier into bread and you will have enough food for days. Look at that. 76 stock, five days still. In the forests, you will also find these mushrooms. So be sure to keep your eyes open at all times for these shiny little objects. Also, if you're very low on fatigue or about to set up camp, if you're close to a village, go to the inn instead. This might make rest slightly more expensive, but you can save up on a lot of food. If you are near Strumcap, what you want to do is go to the north right here. And if you don't want to have a spoil, just click away. But trust me, this is going to make your life on extreme difficulty so much easier. So when you enter this place, you don't want to talk with the lady just yet. It will not have any effect. Pick up the hemp right here, inspect the box, take the ornament key, open up this hatch, go down. You will find some sad refugees being trapped in the cellar. Pretty brutal, but you can also interact with this chest right here. Take the work manual for more free knowledge. I mean, we already have three right now. I still have to spend all those. It's going super fast with this rotation. But when you get back to the surface, you will realize that the lady is gone. You can now inspect the wood though. Pick up every single one of those. Chop even more on the block right here. But now, if we leave this place, we will get attacked by a group of bandits. And this is the crew of Ines. But now we can negotiate with the bad lady. We have to prove our loyalty, pay some of the wages. You wish to deal with me? <laughs> Let's go into crime. We get chains if we accept this mission. So now we basically have two days of capturing some civilians, some innocent people. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. It's extreme difficulty, not just for us, but also for the poor people living in this virtual world. So just look around, search for the peoples with the knapsack icon. Those are the precious. Those are the money you want to hunt for. The big buck, if you will. Just save right in front of them. Be sure to have a couple chains. And now we just want to capture as many of them as possible because that seller is begging for us to get filled up to the top. We're not going to give them bread. We're not going to leave them be. We're going to make their lives miserable. Be warned though, these encounters are pretty damn difficult if you do these super early. The risks are extremely high while the rewards are too. So if you think you're up for the task, well, you can give it a shot. Since we only want to capture like three or four of these dudes, you first want to focus on taking down like four and then focus on capturing the rest. RNG Lords, here we go. 5v4 tyrannical traits awesome by the way if you capture people you will get increased willpower as long as there is a prisoner in the troop perfect we get to weaken her with this ability and now we can capture another one capture another one floops now we have four prisoners rumanor mikaktos aldakik and levenal a lot of loot right here as well repair the damage Got a nice amount of experience as well. So now we can level up our characters a little bit. There is a chance these guys are going to make a run for it when we're resting. But most of the times with your first rest, you don't have to worry too much about that. But yeah, we have to pay a lot of wages right now. Have to feed plenty of mouths. Voila, still 15 happiness. Zero money, but wait until we get back to that Tiltron lumber mill. Hand over the prisoners. So that's... 
Bam, 40 coin and some influence. Another one, but we can just keep handing over more prisoners. And the more you do this on higher levels, the more the rewards will be. So now, after just a couple seconds of turning in poor civilians, placing them in the basement, we got 160 crowns. And wow, we even have 58 wood right now, which we cannot even bring with us. You know what, I'm gonna drop a couple logs, but yeah, if we open the map quickly, just a little bit north of Strump Cap, we have that lumber mill, and around this place, you will find plenty of these poor civilians, which you can capture at all times to make a ton of gold. Same counts for the bandits, the bad guys, contracts, which you can pick up all over the place. If you put some bad guys in chains every now and then and bring them to the jail, you will get even more of those crowns. If you are in Strump Cap and get your hands on a nice amount of resources, I definitely recommend you to craft these racks as quick as possible. These cost three leather and three cloth. And if you craft it, you can learn apprentice rank blueprints. Nice thing is, if you do the minigame right, like I did earlier, you will get bonus stats of them and even two armor layer slots. If you are lucky, you can pick up even more leather at the marketplace. So right now I'm just gonna purchase every single one of them. We can learn the reinforced buckler, but also apprentice armor sets and even helmets. Helmets are a new addition to the game, which give you so many more stats. It's practically stupid to not craft them. I mean, free stats. Everybody wants these, right? Plus four armor, plus six armor, plus three guards, and even a plus seven. They also come with passive or active traits, which can make your character bolts even more powerful. If we quickly visit the companion, you should also fight some animals as quick as possible to unlock the torch blueprint. Check this out, guys. Plus light, plus the torch strike skill, which is basically a free AoE damage skill, which even puts your enemies ablaze. So it's an awesome tick over time. While it passively gives you plus three critical hits and also vision. So you can start exploring tombs of the ancients. You can also craft these throwing sickles, hatchets and knives, but these only come with a plus crit. So torches are hands down the best offhands for rogues or rangers. So there we go, two superior badabluts or whatever it's called. We can give one to our tank right here, give another one to the tank. And now, yeah, I think we should give one to Vanessa or well, yeah, they need to get to level three first. And if you have some bonus knowledge points, very important, check out your cooking recipes. Also focus on the types of fish you catch during your adventures. I currently have two pike and two carp, so the decision is made quickly, either the grilled carp or the pike soup. But say you only catch sardines with the RNG, focus on that blueprint first. But you can tell that these give you like six food, so it's awesome to have. I mean, only two of these already give us 12. We just need three more, so we throw in two mushrooms and there we have it. You know what, let's also make some pike soup. Every new thing you make will also give you some bonus experience, which is awesome early. But same counts for the forge, the throwing knife, the sickle, the hatchet will unlock some new sets in the companion. If we focus on some different items, same for that. The absolute final tip I can give you guys is keep your crew size to a minimum. I mean, the smaller it is, the less wages you have to pay, the less mouths you have to feed. And the cool thing is, if you have a crew of like five, the enemy crews you will face will have a similar size. If you have like 10 crew size, it's going to be 10 to 12 enemies. So resolving combat is going to take more time while of course you're also going to have to craft weapons and armor for every single one of your members. I think the best crew size is six. I currently have five so again every time when you're in town visit the inn and check out all the dudes inside. Quick overview your main tank should be the cook for that bonus constitution more HP 
Your off tank should have the blacksmith for strength or dealing damage. Your archer should have angler for food and alchemist for making potions. And finally, your two rangers, tinkerer and thief, also for dex and critical hits. The attribute list, important. Some pieces of armor give you plus movement speed, which can help early game, especially for archers and rangers. But willpower, guys, get this to 15 once you start having trouble with combat. If your characters get one shot, it's super brutal. You don't want this to happen, but hey, remember the quick save tip I gave you? Check out the top right of the screen. Every time when I press F1, it saves the game. So in options, shortcuts, just put that somewhere close to your trigger finger, let's say. All right, so there you have it. Everything you need to know to basically survive the first days of extreme difficulty and have a ton of raw materials at your disposal. We have those chains ready to capture enemies for free money. We have plenty of medicine. We have a nice amount of food. The only thing we have to focus on now is paying the wages. So you can just open the map, do all these missions for those contract bounties. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful. And yeah, share your thoughts in the comments down below. If you have more tips for the community, awesome if you can write them down in the comments. Right now, though, it is 4 a.m. out. I want to wish you good luck with Extreme Difficulty. You can expect more guides with follow-up info, but yeah. If you want to have quick answers to your questions, join our Discord. We have thousands of members right there. You're very welcome. Right now, though, I'm going to continue the save and get back to you another time. Guys, have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.